Okay, so um, our next speaker learned to fix bikes through community bike shops and worked for many happy years as a mechanic and manager at UBC's Bike Kitchen. She has also worked as a cycling advocate in cities across Canada and trained as an urban planner focused on cycling and mobility as a human right. She also had a very eye-opening three-hour long career as a bike courier. <laughs> in 2015, she co-founded Side Saddle, Canada's first women-focused, everyone welcome bike shop. Please welcome Andrea Smith. Hello, yes, hello. Uh, so thank you so much for having me. Uh, I wish I could say I was happy to be here, but there's about a thousand of you out there, which makes this basically a nightmare scenario for me. <laughs> At least I'm wearing pants. Can't take pants for granted. We'll get into that in a bit. Anyway, I'm here from Side Saddle, Vancouver's women-focused, everyone welcome bike shop. Uh, and a lot of the people here are talking about really big picture projects. We're working on the ground front line one person at a time, trying to win people over to a different way of doing things. In this case, getting women on bikes. That's our storefront. And now we wait for the next slide. No, I can jump ahead. Oh, thank you. That was my dad's bike. He gave it to me. Um, there's a very long history of cycling and feminism, women using bikes to make their lives bigger and better. The bike was invented at the end of the 19th century. It revolutionized personal transportation, replaced the horse and buggy. And uh, at the time, it was a dark time for women. We couldn't legally vote or own property or wear pants. And uh, everyone wanted to ride bikes, so it really made the pants fight one that was worth picking. And we picked it, and women got on bikes and got out into the world. And won a lot of big battles. You can learn more about this when Meryl Streep takes to the big screen as Emmeline Pankhurst later this fall. Anyway, our shop colors are the purple, white, and green of the suffragette movement to honor that history. And that was our shop motto that just went by. Uh, so why should we care about the, a retail store? Why should we care about retail environments and the experience people are having in them? Well, bike shops are a key piece of the infrastructure that makes cycling possible in a city. And right now, they're not getting it done for women. Women do have different needs. We have different bodies. Our bodies fit differently on the bike. And we move through cities differently. We're responsible for more of the domestic labor. They put GPS tractor trackers on cyclists and release them in the city to see where they would go. Men travel through the city like they're being shot out of a cannon. <laughs> a to B. Women are wandering all over the place. And it's because they're, they're doing more chores. <laughs> and it's not a joke, you guys. It's true. Oh, wow. This is what we do. We try to sell products that aren't disposable, which is very difficult in late capitalism. Most things are designed to end up in the landfill after a single season. And we're a store, but we, we're involved in the community, looking for every opportunity to grow the community of women who are out there riding bikes. Uh, so we launched the shop. We got a great response from the community. My mom called me. She was freaking out because we made the cover of the paper, and I was greeted by this auspicious headline. <laughs> But so, so anyway, the bike industry is aware that it has a problem, and the League of American Cyclists commissioned this study. They went into bike shops and talked to bike shop owners and customers and staff and came up with a list of recommendations for making more inclusive environments, which I think are really relevant to all of us here in this room who are trying to build movements that include more different kinds of people. And women are an awesome group to start with because we're 52% of the population. <laughs> so this is, a, this is a big one, just to challenge what people think is possible for women on a bike. And what we've realized as we've opened the store only three months ago is that it's almost more about helping women challenge their own assumptions about what's possible for them on a bike or what they might be able to do and enjoy doing on a bike. And we actually get our eyes open about that every day. Representation is hugely important. You've got to have women on the front line delivering your programs and services. And you've got to target your services explicitly to women to let them know that they're going to be able to come out and have a different kind of experience than they've had in the past and maybe learn some new skills. And now we wait, because <laughs> I don't remember. Oh yeah, OK. This is from the City of Vancouver archives. This was taken in 1906. It's the Terminal City Cycling Club from right here in Vancouver. The funny part is that this could have been taken last week.
I, th I, think, I think I know some of these guys. In fact, I think some of them are here. <laughs> so this is important. This, I think we forget the importance of all that is appealing and charismatic and just nice about life and how much that can win people over. Within a, the first month of opening the shop, we had a couple of moms choose to breastfeed in the space. And that really meant a lot to us because it really cued us that people were feeling okay in the space. This is my favorite photo probably of all time from cycling. It's the 1970s women's tour de France when that was a thing. This woman is the queen of the mountains. She's wearing the polka dot jersey, which means she's better than anyone else at climbing the Alps on a bicycle. So I think for progressives, we have a hard time getting our head around what the value might be of competitive sport. But it's not about elitism. It's not about who's the skinniest and the fastest. It's about being inspired by someone who's doing something that's really hard and finding that point of commonality between a woman, the queen of, between the queen of the mountains and a woman who's getting back on her bike for the third time today, even though she's fallen off twice because she's learning as an adult. And so we tried to do this. We went down to the Gastown Grand Prix. That's Coco the Chihuahua taking in the race. And we put up prize money. We tried to sponsor the women's race. They gave our money to the men. I know, right? Want, want. It's okay. We'll be back next year. We'll get it right. But it's easier said than done, these things. So this is my favorite quote from the report. And it's not that it's not about women specifically in feminism, because it is. <laughs> but the point is we are all trying to build communities where people can have respectful, authentic relationships with one another. And I think that values-driven small business. We're like, we want to be like Mr. Hooper. If you, on Wikipedia, it says his store was a place for Muppets and humans to gather and spend time together. <laughs> anyway, I think values-driven small business has a really important role to play in creating convivial spaces and uh, uh, economically, environmentally, and socially sustainable future for the city. If you want more information about anything I've talked about, these are great resources. Why She Buys is particularly good for anyone who's marketing to women whether you're selling luxury cars or ideas, which I think a lot of the people in this room are. And up next is our contact information. We want to be involved if you have a project and you'd like to have a bike shop as a partner. Bike mechanics can be good friends to have. We want to hear from you. If you need a bike, obviously we want to hear from you. Check out our website, follow us on social media, and that's my email. Use it.